Oh, hey there, it's Liz Rohr from Real World NP, and you're watching NP Practice Made Simple, the weekly videos to help save you time, frustration, and help you learn faster so you can take the best care of your patients. So this week's video, I wanna talk about wrist pain, the overarching general approach to diagnosing wrist pain so that you aren't missing anything. So I also made a video in, an, in doing an interview with a physical therapist last week, so definitely check that out if you haven't already. I've also made a video called Orthopedic Hacks. I will link to both of those down below, but it generally brings in a lot of pearls that we talked about both on the interview and in the orthopedic hacks video but the first thing that I do when it comes to wrist pain in primary care I'm not an orthopedic MP I also want to give that disclaimer I am in primary care and we see this a lot so this is my general approach so the first thing you want to do is number one is this acute or is it chronic? So did it just happen or happen a couple of days ago or has it been greater than three months? And of course there's room for the subacute people as well, right? That's about like 14 days to 30 days-ish before it starts turning uh, into a chronic injury. And the important thing there is that actually with a lot of acute injuries or acute pain, there are more potentially concerning red flag diagnoses associated with that. I'm not talking about that in this video because for the most part, patients in primary care are coming with chronic wrist pain. And so in those cases, just use your resources and be very cautious for the wrist pain patients uh, that are acute. The next question is, it, is this a traumatic injury or is it not traumatic? So um, traumatic meaning, did they have some sort of fall? So you might see in documentation something called FOSH, F-O-O-S-H, a fall on outstretched hand. I'm doing it if you're watching on video. Um, and that is really important to know the mechanism of injury, if they fell like that, if they um, were in a motor vehicle accident, like that's really important information. Not only did they have an injury that started before the pain, but also what was the mechanism of injury because that really helps inform what else is going on. For the most part, in primary care, I am seeing chronic non-traumatic injuries, or non-traumatic non wrist pain rather. The third thing is, do they have any systemic symptoms? So is this, is there any risk for a rheumatologic condition or infectious process? You really want to think about that as like your main third, like third triage thing to think about when it comes to somebody with wrist pain in primary care. So after you've triaged, the next part is the physical assessment. So you want to think about the general approach to musculoskeletal exams, but also specific special tests. And actually before I jump into that, well actually maybe as part of that. So the first thing you wanna do is like look at the wrist, right? <laughs> so even if you're not that comfortable with the various bones and ligaments and tendons and muscles and all of that stuff, you can still give safe care to a patient if you're following the general approach to care, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. So you're just, you wanna start by looking at the wrist itself. So you're looking for red, uh, any uh, redness or signs of erythema. Again, considering that there are varying skin tones of patients and the underlying erythema may appear differently. Um, do, is there any swelling? Is there any uh, pain on palpation? Is, and where is that? Is it, um, is it a more localized pain versus a diffuse pain? And the little pearl of practice there is that it's more likely to be like a bony or ligamentous injury with a very like point specific pain versus more diffuse pain tends to be a little bit more um, on the side of being a nerve related pain. So that's important that it kind of ties back into triage. You're trying to get to the bottom of the general picture. Are we talking about a bony ligament muscular injury? Are we talking about a nerve related injury or nerve related problem? Or are we thinking about more of a systemic related issue, right? And then from there, um, you want to assess strength. So I always have, and I'm on video, but you holding your two fingers and then the patient grabbing and, and squeezing as hard as they can so it doesn't hurt your hand when they do that. And you're assessing that from a scale from one to five out of five for strength, um, you're also assessing range of motion the best you can. So we are not physical therapists. Likely if you're watching this, you're not an orthopedic NP. And so you might not necessarily be able to speak to the degrees of flexion or extension or et cetera, et cetera. And that's not typically our role in primary care anyway. But generally speaking, where's the range of motion? What What is happening and, and where are patients getting limited? What is actually limiting them? Like, are they limited by pain? Are they not able to do their activities of daily life? Like what is what is contributing here? The next thing you want to think about is the special tests. So there's a couple of different special tests. So one is the Phelan and Tonell's test. So Phelan's test is, um, and again, if you're watching this on video, um, holding your, your hands in hyper flexion and uh, so that it's palm, uh, the dorsum of the hand to dorsum of the hand and you're holding it together for about 30 seconds and seeing if there's any um, pain or numbness or tingling and that's assessing the carpal tunnel. 
uh, for any carpal tunnel syndrome. And the sensitivity and specificity there is not 100%. As with most tests, it's around 68 to 73% sensitivity and specificity. I should have written those down, <laughs> but that's approximately where it is. The next one is the Tonell's test. And so again, if you're watching a video, you can see, but if you're listening, it's um, the, the right at the base of the palm where the wrist meets the palm. And then um, uh, palpating right over the, the carpal tunnel basically to elicit any sort of nerve pain or numbness or tingling as well. And similarly, sensitive and sensitivity and specificity are around the same, so not 100%. Um, the next one to consider and that I recommend doing is a test for um, Decker Vane's tenosynovitis. So um, again, if you're watching, you can see this, but if you're listening, I'll describe it. So um, my thumb is going in the middle of my palm and I'm wrapping the rest of my fingers around. And then I'm pulling my hand down so that it's putting tension over the radial side of my arm. And so that pulling will elicit pain um, up into the forearm and al almost all the way up to the elbow if that is a positive test for Decker Vane's tenosynovitis and I believe the sensitivity and specificity is around the same um, but those are those are all like repetitive motion type of overuse injuries for carpal tunnel as well as Decker veins so a um, couple other things to, to add so it's like the triage based approach will really help you in a lot of ways especially if it's chronic and not traumatic Decker veins, carpal tunnel syndrome, there are there's arthritis, there's a couple of more like rare zebra diagnoses, but like one of the nice things uh, about orthopedics, and maybe orthopedic people are gonna hate me for saying this, but there's a general pathway. The orthopedic hacks video, I talk about this as well, but it's basically there's four main steps when it comes to orthopedic related things. So if we've determined this is an orthopedic injury or overuse, or um, problem versus a nerve problem versus a systemic problem, the main general steps are non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, medications, if that works for that patient, according to their comorbidities. The next one is physical therapy. The next step is injections, and the next step is surgery. That's typically the general broad categories of intervention that orthopedics will generally offer, orthopedic musculoskeletal injuries. And so the nice thing is like, even if you're not necessarily super familiar with the zebra diagnoses that can go with wrist pains that are the chronic non-traumatic wrist pains, you can send them to physical therapy. And like, if you haven't watched the, ortho the physical therapy interview that I did last week, again, please do so. But we touched on this a little bit is that even though they have different diagnoses from a medical standpoint, the interventions might be similar. So that's a little, little pearl of practice there. And I guess when it comes to the assessment, I didn't talk about imaging yet. So when there's acute injuries, especially when there's acute injuries, but if there's chronic pain that is related to a previous injury, you may want to consider doing um, plain radiography for those patients just to start to see if there are any bony um, specific injuries. And so I can write in the description down below, but it's usually a PA lateral and oblique view, I believe. But anyway, don't quote me on this video. I'll have it like for real in the description down below this video. You usually want to consider that kind of in imaging. For chronic in for chronic pain, you don't necessarily need imaging. It's really dependent on the history and your assessment, right? So if it's really classically coming up as carpal tunnel, you don't necessarily need an x-ray for that. You can do a clinical diagnosis using your assessment and then determine if they need bracing versus they need physical therapy assessment to help you clear clarify the diagnosis. So yeah, and then one other pearl of practice is that we I always recommend, and generally speaking, medicine recommends, if there is a joint problem, we're looking at the joint below and the joint above. So you're looking at the finger joints as well as the elbow to see if there's any referred pain from either location. But yeah, so that is the quick overview of assessing wrist pain in primary care. Please let me know what questions you have about this video or future videos. Um, if you haven't grabbed the ultimate resource guide for the new NP, head over to realworldnp.com slash guide. You'll get these videos sent straight to your inbox every week with notes from me, patient stories, and bonuses that I really just don't share anywhere else. Thank you so very much for watching. Hang in there and I'll see you soon.